early summer at home in southwest France, and chef John Burton Race is growing accustomed to the family life he never had time for in England. Hello, what are you doing? <laughs> but with six kids, it's a full-time job. Oh yeah, I do actually. It's nice colour, isn't it? Sort of silver sparkly. One of our biggest problems, especially about having a big family, is knowing how to be a father to all of them. But sometimes it's nice to just step out and take one of them with you and understand and learn what they're doing. With a household full of women, one-to-one -one father son time is especially rare. Charles, would you like to go on a trip with Dad? What? Where? Bit of fishing, bit of men's stuff. We need to talk, don't we? Man to man. Come on, then. Let's go upstairs. Come on. Can you do that? Roller skate. Yeah, just a bit. Woo, woo! <laughs> Next day, John packs for the men's fishing trip. But if they're going to eat well, he and Charles will have to catch a fish or two. So John's covering his options. If the weather's like this, uh, to save face, I'll, ch I'll probably check into a hotel. I can't come back. Especially if I don't catch a fish, so I'll pretend I caught, caught a fish and stop at the local fishmongers, I think. The thing that I don't like is ants and insects in my food. Up until now, it's never appealed to me, but Charles's been nagging me to do it. He's the, uh, probably the country bumpkin of the family, and he, he said, come on, Dad, let's go on an adventure, so we're going on an adventure. My mother bought Charles a tent and a sleeping bag and he's been absolutely desperate to get out and get that tent up. It's just Charles' sort of thing, again, outdoor and John absolutely adores fishing. I'm not sure that Charles loves the fishing quite as much as John would like him to. What's Trout's favourite food? Worms. And worms it is. Charles tries to be... I don't know, I think he really tries to copy John. And he sort of wants to, you know, he says, do I look like Dad? And, you know, I've got the same colour eyes and... Yeah, it really wants to be him. Right, now the thing is with trout, what you've got to do is you've got to be very, very, very careful, careful. and quiet, right? Quiet. He pretends to be very boisterous and a bit like John, you know, sort of all bravado. But yeah, he's quite shy, as is John, if you can believe that. Yeah, come on, Charles, get the front. I won't miss you. Come I on. will miss you, though, Mum. You'll miss me, good. I won't miss you. Bye. The best trout are to be found in the Black Mountain Forest, several hours away. And as John tends to get lost, he travels in convoy, guided by a friend who knows the region like the back of his hand. Have we got everything, Charles? Let's see. I've got boat, uh, net. Remote control? Net thingies, yeah. Yep. Net. The other car, yeah. What about the rods? Fishing rods. The person who catches the first fish, that's a bar of chocolate. And the person who catches the largest, that's another bar. Yeah. You're out of luck. But, 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 a large, but, a, but if you get a large fish, a large bar of chocolate. A larger bar of chocolate? Yeah, a large fish. OK. So it's great coming away and not having the girls with us, isn't it? Yeah, great. Huh? Great. No girls, no fish. Yeah. 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 Camping. Michel Chaper, one of John's newfound friends, leads the way to the ideal spot. What's that noise? Fish. And where there's fish, there's yes. us. Yeah? Yep, cool, let's go, Dad. Chaper, eh? No. This is uh, going to be good. This is going to be really good, Charles. And uh, I'm going to uh, win the bar of chocolate. I am. The weather's good and there are plenty of trout, with a texture and taste quite unlike that of fish farm trout that are common fare in England. But they're very elusive, if you're not an expert fisherman like Michel, who's fished here since he was a boy. John, yeah, yeah, but John. John, on va, on va commencer donc à, à mettre les cuissards, hein? Oui. Parce que, comme c'est quand même assez, assez glissant, oui. il vaut mieux qu'on les mette, hein? Et je vais te montrer, donc, Morning. le départ de pêche. Come on. It's got a bit stuck. See that, you've got that little yellow float there? And then the little grub on the bottom, right? Yeah. Throw it out. No. Up. And over. Throw down. Thanks, sir. Can you do that by yourself, eh? John. Oui. Uh, tu fais attention, j'ai senti une touche là. Eh? Là, là où tu es, un peu plus haut. Oui. Sinky, sinky, please. 
I can handle it. Alright, Charles, can you manage that? Huh? Yeah, I think so. Here yeah, then, quick. But I had a bite, but I lost it. Such is fishing, Charles, such is fishing. With John's back turned, the women of the family, with some friends in tow, seize the chance to give his cuisine the slip and have the sort of treat he'd ban outright, a visit to the local French Chinese. So Evie, go over there. But when it comes to ordering, Kim's French lessons don't seem to have paid off too well. Cat, it <laughs> Come on, girls, you're supposed to help me now. You're the ones at school over here. <laughs> well, crevettes are um, shrimp, aren't they? Shrimp is sesh. He just said, he was explaining that meal, and he said, and it's got shrimp. Yeah, and I didn't understand. And he said it in English, Mum. All right. And I know lot is a fish, isn't it? Wouldn't have a hockey's clue. It is. Do you know what fish is in French, then? What is it? Do you want to sit on that rock? Can you manage? I think so. Now, don't slip into the water. You know what Mum said? Then I've caught a stick. Whoa! Charles! <laughs> you know what? I knew you were going to fall in. I would like it dry. You'll just dry off in the sun, don't worry. So, yeah, John. Go. Never? Wait. You jammy bugger. Lev, Lev, bravo! C'est bien! Well done, Charles. Bien, bravo! Didn't put up much of a fight. After Michel's sixth catch, he heads home, leaving John and Charles in the wilderness, so far without any fish for supper. Allez! Allez, au revoir, Bonne soirée, eh, salut! Au revoir, oui. Au revoir. Now my feet are wet. There we go. There we go. I've got one. Get the net, Charlie. I'll get it. Oh. Don't let the fish see the net. That's it, hide it. For a small guy, it's real smart. Up, up, up. up. Good boy, good boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. One bar of chocolate for me. No bars of chocolate for you. <laughs> Here, look at that. Oh, what is that? That's a beautiful fish, Charles. They can uh, kill me too. Let's go it. put it in the keep net, OK? What does that mean? Mm, that's good for a first attempt. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is what it is. If I use that thing, oh, a bit hard this is. Again. I was rather no. hoping that you'd be able to put this up by yourself. Amelia. Don't eat like a pig. <laughs> uh, I knew this was going to be a nightmare, Charles. So did I. So push that through that end. Uh -huh. Cheers, Millie. Cheers. <laughs> With the tent up, it's time to cook. On the menu, the three brown trout they've caught and gutted. Now, I know you're not really very fond of fish, are you? I am. I'm fond. I'm fine. You're going to be all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Can I tip that one? Yeah. That's flour. Tip um, about a third of it third. into this tray here. Okay. And I season it up with a load of salt. And let, let me just crush some garlic. Crush some garlic. Can I put some in? What do you think? I can't do it, Dad. I almost got it. That's one. Pat it off. Yep. They smell lovely, don't they? Can't smell them. I've got blocked nose. Can, Can you get me a that? bottle of wine, Charles, please? Yes. I'm dying for a, Which one a nice you want? Which one cold glass you want? of wine. A white wine, please. What's a white wine? The I one that I'm... looks like lemonade. Come right up. Come right up. Thank you, Charles. Look at these, Charles. No, they look nice. Yeah, look. I know, they're brilliant. Keep going, Dad. Put the rest of this butter hmm? on top of the trout. Hey. Okay. And this. Oh, that's very nicely done, Charles. I bet it's not, is it? Charles? Hmm? Will you taste the caper with Dad? What are they, capers? There. 
Just try one in your mouth, go on. One. Straight in, right, go. Mm, sour. Sour. I'm just going to put some par chopped parsley in here. Look at this, Charles, this is the best food. Yeah, I can see they look lovely. A bit more salt. Pa, 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 pa. But the flies are going near the fish. Don't worry, they won't have a chance. I'll give you a trout, yeah? To eat? Yeah. I don't know if I will eat it. Though. Come on, Charles, I'll just give you this little one here. You can't eat the tail, can you? No, this is the life, Charles. Here, dip the bread oh, into what? the butter. Sauce. Butter. The sauce, yeah. Sauce butter. Nice, not bad. Nice, not bad. You mean it's, fantastic, it's, Dad? Yeah, my fantastic is good. Should we try the fish? Hope the heart's still not left. Mm -hmm. Hope it hasn't left the heart in. No, I've gutted them out. What's Cheers. That? Happy fishing. And Le remember, leaf boy. Remember, mm. no girls. Yeah, remember no girls. Do you know how many John's fulfilling the dream he had when he quit chefing in London six. to cook ingredients straight from the world about him. Are you going to use the water as well? And most important of all, yeah. he spent more time with Charles than he has done in years. You get into your sleeping bag. You get into yours? Yeah, I'm going to tidy up the camp a bit first. Good night. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning. I've driven about 30,000 miles so far, just researching things for myself. That sells me mileage. I mean, 30,000 miles in six months, that's mad. Fired up by the success of his fishing trip with Charles, three days later, John clocks up yet more mileage and heads off alone to Gruissan on the Mediterranean. He'll take part in the back-breaking ancient tradition of shore-based sea fishing, the galuche, He'll stay with local fishermen at their simple seaside shack called Mont Plaisir. You don't turn up to one of these things in a, in a very posh car. You, you arrive in your dirty scruffy jeans and your scuffed up shoes and your shirt. And if it smells a bit, even better. For centuries, every May to September, local fishermen have gathered here on the coastline, working, eating and drinking together in simple little homes like this one. Très bien. Et ce soir, tu... Tu dormiras là. Ok. Tu dors là. Oui. Et avec qui... Bernard. Avec Bernard. Avec Marceau. Bernard. Oui. So et, André says this is where I'm going to sleep, and I've got to sleep with two <laughs> two gruff fishermen, and they're sleeping in a double bed together, and I'm sleeping here on a on the other side of the room, the toilet. Allez toilette. Ah les toilettes. Les toilettes. Et si, mais je vais te le montrer. Allez. Ils sont derrière. Mais, mais quand c'est plus, quand it's raining, quand c'est plus, qu'est-ce que vous faites alors Oh, mais tant pis. <rire> on met le truc à la ficelle pour accoucher. Hein? Allez, régale-toi, John. Non, non. <rire> non. Et si, John That is seriously bad. That should be closed. Allez, c'est bon. Down. Allez. In this sort of thing, with the food, with hunting, with shooting, with fishing, of course you're going to get the Mickey taken out of you. They're going to say, you know, here comes roast beef or here comes boiled cabbage because that's what you can cook. And let's face it, we take the Mickey out of the French. You know, they all have bad breath and smell of garlic and drink too much. But I mean, and they're lousy at rugger. But um, and maybe some of the prejudices are true actually. But um, no, joking apart, it's it, it it's all it's all cool. Aware he's got a tough day ahead, John plays safe and doesn't drink the night away with his new French friends. Well, it's first thing in the morning and everyone's a bit sort of uh, lost, I think. Uh, they must have been drinking heavily the night before. Eh? And, but it looks like the, the boat's going to go out now, so... It's, it's exactly like human trawling. Um, 
The neck goes out on one point. There's a heavy weight on the front of the cap, it's called. Another little boy out on the left-hand side. A team of five or six fishermen down one side, a team of five and six fishermen down the other, and you have to pull together simultaneously, very gently and very slowly, evenly up the beach. The Kalush will soon be banned here by the EU, as too many varieties of fish are caught indiscriminately. But John's fellow fishermen have convinced him his efforts today will help land a rich haul. Oh, my back's breaking. Look at these guys, look so cool. There you are, look. There's the little red boy ahead. That's the thing that we've got to bring up to the beach. In the 1930s, it was most popular. But now it's virtually gone and it's dead and there's no one on the beach anymore and there's no one fishing anymore. So, I'm sorry, I'm a bit, I suppose I'm a bit privileged to see this before it goes forever. Although at the moment, the way my back feels, I don't feel that privileged, to be honest. Oh dear. Catch of the day. All that work for this? I don't think so. <laughs> But after several more hours of hard graft, the calouche pays off. There are sea bass, mackerel, place, and enough mullet for the dog's dinner, as well as the fisherman's. A grey mullet, that's a better fish. Much nicer. I could eat that. Lunch. As the honorary fisherman, John cooks everyone a late lunch back at the shack. These are all my fishing buddies uh, from this morning. André, dit bonjour. Alongside John's dish will be a bourride, a hearty fish stew with eels, straight from the local estuary. This is a, a now because just become mate of mine, John uh, Paul, and he's making a local bourride uh, with eels, and um, I'm really looking forward to this. And also, I'm looking forward to showing off to these guys because they think they know it all. The first thing I'm going to do is take off the fins and snip off the tail. You've got to snip off the tail because when we fry that, when I fry that in the pan. It burns. Uh, with all fish, you've got to get the scales off because it's like chewing your own fingernails if you leave them on. It's absolutely disgusting. This is the unpleasant bit. You've got to get all the guts out and the gills. John, oui. du poivre, du poivre, souple. Oui. Vous avez ça là? Ça va? Merci. Et le poivre? Merci. But what I want to do is put these into a marinade and. For them to take on the flavour of all the herbs and the oil and the lemon, I need to make a little incision down the length of the fish, and that's called scoring. The next thing I've got to do is make the marinade. It's um, a little bit of fresh uh, fennel, which I, I picked round the back of the hut here. Uh, garlic and some uh, fresh thyme, two types of oil, a little bit of l'huile uh, arachide or peanut oil, as it's called, and um, olive oil about 50-50 mixed. Some lemon. While you're getting everything else ready, this is marinating and taking on board all that lovely fennel, all that gorgeous um, fresh thyme and the scent of uh, garlic. <laughs> du poivre, s'il vous plaît, John. Du poivre, s'il vous plaît. Get your own, mate. Merci. No glamorous restaurant, no posh customers and no brigade of sous chefs. But the ingredients are fresh. The company's good. John's cooking, and he loves it. Just covered with the crab stock. So we've got potatoes, tomato concentrate, parsley and garlic, eels, potatoes, parsley and garlic, more eels, and some more stock. Je vais mettre sur le gaz maintenant. Gaz à bout. Oui. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Then she just brings it up to the boil and cooks it for 20 minutes. Now that's not probably a borid that I've seen before. It's, and that's and that's fine. It's a local dish, but I'm looking forward to tasting it. Ça va? Ça va? Oui. 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 
I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make a vinaigrette here, <laughs> but I'm getting rudely <laughs> interrupted <laughs> by a, a fisherman who fancies himself. And then in here is some white wine vinegar. Tiens. I'm making a tarragon. Ne crie pas, ne crie pas. Voilà, le piment. I'm making a tarragon vinaigrette. In the bowl, I've got some white wine vinegar, and it's 50% groundnut oil or peanut oil. It's called l'huile d'arachide in French, and 50% olive oil. And then a little bit of garlic, lemon juice, salt, pepper, and a little sugar just to get the, some sweetness into it. Ça, c'est mon secret. Vous savez? Ouais. C'est une vinaigrette à la estragon. I'm just going to cook the fish. Don't use any more oil, just use the oil from the marinade. Straight into the pan. Lay the fish down. They take a, a fish this size, take about five minutes on one side and five minutes on the other. Give me a drink, I think that's it. Give me a drink and another one and another one. Mais ça, chef français, chef français, <laughs> oui, tu sais. They're just, just cooked, still pink. A little fish stock. In with the shallots, garlic, tomato, and basil. Pour a little of the vinaigrette into the pan. And while it's still really warm, I pour it over the red mullet. This is getting the approval of the fishermen anyway. Ready? Ça, c'est ça. Ah ouais. Faut attendre le sauce après. Once they're served, it's honours even between the eel stew and John's red mullet salad. The fishermen may not be restaurant inspectors, but right now their approval means more to the chefs of Mont Plaisir. Bonjour de John. À mon plaisir. Et à mon plaisir. Et à la caluche. Là, tu t'es surpassé. Merci, hein, merci, merci pour bon, tout. Bon, avec grand plaisir, ouais. c'est nous. Allez, Denis, allez, allez, merci, allez, 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 merci pour tout. Allez, 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 with a belly full of fresh eel stew and red mullet, John retires for his last night at Mont Plaisir, bedding down again next to two gruff fishermen, who've had even more of the local wine than he has. Bonsoir, Bernard. Allez, bonsoir, Marceau. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, John. In the next episode of French Leave, John meets a wild boar. She didn't like that croissant. So I've just been headbutted by a wild boar. The love affair's over and I'm out of here, I tell you now. Cooks a French pig and gets a very French birthday present. He looks so stupid with his pajamas on. <laughs> <laughs>